What is up guys, it's the Winters Tech Doll here. Earlier this year, LG introduced the LG Flex 2, which at fast became the device representing LG in 2015, but it is still not able to cover up the presence of another hero phone by LG, the G4. Being released right after Flex 2, LG G4 borrows a lot of design cue and philosophy from it. The phone as a whole does not differ too much. The edge in the front of the phone is where it is almost identical to the Flex 2. As you walk your way to the back, the self-healing back cover is replaced by a choice of leather, traditional plastic, and ceramic. The leather feels really comfortable in the hand, and it does give people a fresh new design look since most devices are either metal or plastic, but I just don't know whether the leather can set up well to the tear and wear inside your pocket. Maybe LG should adopt the leather Samsung used on their Note 10.1 and Note 3 that will never break. The other design cue carry over is a curved shape body. But the G4 is not much but slightly curved, but LG still insists that the slight curve will still provide a good dynamic experience. Unfortunately, the G4 only gave me the same feeling as a regular flat screen device, but the QHD screen with Quantum Dot technology will certainly provide a much better viewing experience compared to the Flex 2. The Quantum Dot technology may sound like a marketing gimmick, where compared to the display from Note 10.1 2014, the colors on the tablet does look dull compared to the G4, and thanks to the Quantum Dot technology, the outdoor visibility is very good, especially under bright sunlight. Other than having a killer screen, LG G4 does pack out the flagship specs, Power of the device is Snapdragon 808 with 3 gb of RAM, which is more than capable enough to handle everyday tasks. Of course, the Snapdragon 810 is still a better CPU than 808, but with the manufacturer need to throttle down the CPU, the Snapdragon 810 certainly does not able to perform at its highest potential. In the chart on the screen, you can see that the throttle down Snapdragon 810's performance is relatively similar to Snapdragon 808, so there is no reason to use a more expensive CPU that is crippled. After using the device running both Snapdragon 810 and 808, unless you worry about the specs on paper, it is almost impossible to tell the difference. The Snapdragon 808 can run the app smoothly and more than capable enough for those casual users who use their phone to check mails and browse internet. I can assure you that you can just run anything without worrying too much. And also, the heat control of AOA is certainly much better than A10, which is also another plus. And the 3GB of DDR4 RAM can ensure you have a pleasant multitasking experience. The G4 is running Android 5.0 Lollipop with newest GUI on top. The G1 on the Flex 2 did not leave me a very good impression, but G1 on the G4 does impress me a lot. Other than the obvious artistic change to the icon, the major upgrade is the smoothness. The UI is much cleaner than the older version. Everything on the phone just flies. There is no lags or hip cut when navigating inside the phone. Much of the previous and useful feature returned. For example, my personal favorite, the multi-window. I think a lot of people don't use this, but I think it is a very neat feature. I was a little disappointed to find that LG did not add more apps that support this multi-window function. Rest of the features such as Q-Slide, not and peak emotion are also carried over. Swap to the left, we can bring up the smart card. LG added a few new functions to it, for example, remote control, music player, and calendar, so we can access those apps quicker. But I find those features kind of redundant because we can obviously put a shortcut right on the home screen. And those apps, such as music player, can be accessed by pulling down the notification window when they are running in the background. I wish LG could have added something like an information hub like on the HTC Blink feed. One of the new features LG add to the G4 is a smart setting, where you can set the phone, for example, to change sound profile when you're at home or at work, and allows the phone to launch, for example, music player app when you plug in the earphone. If there's one feature that made the LG G4 really stand out for a crowd, it's the camera. I already have you a nice looking metal camera ring. The performance of the camera is very impressive. The 16 megapixel camera comes with 3 axis optical image stabilization, f style 1.8 aperture, the biggest aperture on the phone camera so far, and a color spectrum sensor that will help to determine the source of light, type of light, such as natural or artificial, to determine the best white balance setting, and of course, the laser guided autofocus. The picture quality on the G4 is amazing, and thanks to the color spectrum, the white balance on the picture are spot on, especially during the complicated light source like when the sun is setting, the color spectrum able to produce correct exposure. Under good lighting, the picture are sharp and very vibrant, and thanks to the f stop 1.8 and the optical immunization, it allows the camera to use slower shutter speed. Both features allows maximum light to come into a camera, which results in a very good low light shot, well, for phone camera at least. Speaking of big aperture, you can find me a true those depth of field shot without help of software solution like on the Note 4 that don't really work. The blazing fast laser guided autofocus just completely sweeps camera package. Other than shooting in auto, you have a choice of shooting in full manual. The manual mode allows access to white balance, ISO, shutter speed, and of course, manual focus. The G4 also allows the user to shoot in RAW, then use Photoshop and Lightroom to touch up the picture. I was surprised to find a 30 second shutter delay on the G4 because on a device such as HTC 
CM9 which offer up to 2 seconds only. This is really helpful for those who want to take a low exposure light shot and of course do some light painting. To up the selfie game, LG packed the Jivo with 8 megapixel front facing camera, the highest megapixel count out of the current flagship phones. To make sure you can take the picture with one hand, the shutter button can be activated by hand gesture. The battery life on the G4 is also very impressive. Even with extensive gaming, streaming videos, and web browsing, I still can return home around 20% of battery left. Since the G4 is the only flagship phone that offers removable battery, you probably can care less about charging time. For those who do, G4 does support Qualcomm's Quick Charge 2.0, but the stock charger does not support fast charging, so you have to rely on a third party charger. The only complaint I have is that the G4 can only have wireless charging with the Quick Circle Filio case from the LG. Overall, I am very impressed with the G4. It may not be the best looking phone on the market, but the smooth software experience, the camera, new hardware, and of course the amazing battery life make it one of the best and the competitive Android phone on the market. I still strongly believe it is easy one of the Android phone that we can consider buying. What do you think of the G4? Do you think G4 evolved enough to be competitive in year 2015? Leave your comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time! Thanks for watching. If you really like my video, please hit the like and subscribe button.